Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about MTG Finance and you know we used to be the only finance channel on YouTube under New Law Student. When I was still in law school, I created that channel and obviously I graduated law school and thought okay that doesn't make sense for me to have that channel, people will get confused because people will say oh you're a law student and it's like I was but I'm no longer. But anyway, that's why we changed the MTG line and I wanted to and this should probably tell you along the lines of my I'm thinking. And then I wanted to uh, not just do MTG because I felt MTG was failing as a card game. So then we moved to Umu, which is more of an anime. Uh, it's Umu is actually a uh, ca character in Fate Grand Order, which is one of the mobile games I really enjoy playing. Uh, I don't play as much as I used to, but I used to play a lot when I was making the channel name. And it's a great name, Umu, right? U-M-U. When you talk about the magic market, there's very little investment. Um, it used to be that you could say, put money in this standard card. It used to be this, okay. Hey, there's a standard card and it might be in this deck. Uh, why don't we buy it and see if it goes up in price? And then you would have until rotation to sell it. Today, it's like, hey, there's this standard card and it's really good. It might be reprinted eight times before the next rotation. The number one reason that MTG Finance cannot exist is the reprint for standard and mod. A lot of the volume of trading and selling and flipping is done at that standard and modern scale. Uh, very little of the volume is done in a reserve list because if you go to your local FNM, Friday Night Magic, you go to your local tournament, unless it's a vintage tournament or a legacy tournament, which hardly exists, right? And they'll be like, oh my God, there's a million. No, there's not. Okay, stop. Stop, full stop, stop. Most of the tournaments in Friday Night Magic will be very, uh, if, if it's casual, it'll be EDH. If it's not, it'll be, you know, standard or modern or draft. When you talk about that, the type of trade binder that individual brings to a standard event will be standard. The type of trade binder people bring to a modern event will probably be some combination of modern and standard. Very few trade binders have dual lands or moxes or any of this stuff. And very few trade binders you will see at your local game store consistently as a percentage. Now, if you go to a Magic Fest, maybe people have better stuff there, but at a local game store at a pre-release, if there are trade binders, they will not have like a Black Lotus or a Underground Sea or anything you know, reserve ask that is real. Because again, what are you going to trade into? You're going to trade that into standard crap? No, no one would ever do that, right? It, I mean, let's, the value, the trade up you would need to do something on that would be insane, in my opinion. I would never trade Underground Sea for a, pre, a bunch of pre release cards because you know they're going to go down in price. And you know the Underground Sea is a stable. It would have to be something insane to uh, even warrant that idea. Now let's uh, let's go and let's talk about um, value. Let's talk about um, falling off the cliff and where I see it heading. Troll Toad, not a good sign. Uh, not a good sign. Uh, Star City Games, no longer paying cash. Not a good sign. Cash is hard. Cash is becoming a premium. Cash is becoming difficult to obtain if you're a magic player. Student loan repayments are starting up again and that will be a drain on the magic player base based on their demographics. You can scream and yell all you want about non-binary this, non-binary that to me, but that's not really a large subgroup of the player base. The player base is mostly dudes and often they have their younger guys who have student loans. That is the magic that has historically been the magic gathering play base and I don't see that, that changing ever, unless there's something like crazy happening. Which there might be, I mean, you know, Wizard Coast, you never know about them. There is no reason to buy list um, at the current price. They're very low. Uh, it's, it's absurd, but it, it's one of these things, right? That when it, the market is not what it was a year ago or two years ago, even five years ago, the market wasn't as bloody as it is right now there's blood in the streets if you want to buy in you no know, god bless but um even the reserve list is not safe right now and definitely the standard and modern is not it used to be you had a time period 
where they would not reprint your standard card because they, they would respect the card as in the standard set and therefore it would not be in Commander Masters and the EDH deck or something like that. They would respect it and be like, okay, cool. And this was even before Challenger decks, right? Which made it more difficult because they were reprinting cards in standard that were quote, popular decks at the time. There is just not much wiggle room. Um, let me be 100% frank with you. Uh, there is not much wiggle room at all. Um, it is not a situation where you can make money. Uh, standard sealed. Sealed is not a situation. No one wants your old boxes. No one wants your new boxes. They're on Amazon for half off. It's a situation where the marketplace, the marketplace will always tell you what something is worth. But the current price of that item is the price of the item. What you can sell a item for, it's very different from what you are being told the item is worth. Um, this is the whole idea of appraisals, right? The appraisal is often much higher because then insurance can charge you a higher rate. Because they're like, oh, there's more to insure. But when you actually go to sell the item, you might find out that the appraisal is nowhere near what you can get in cash. And you've been paying insurance for something that you have overinsured. So when we talk about um, the marketplace, the marketplace is what you can sell the collection for right now. That's why the buy list is such an interesting idea because you can sell it all in one go. And that's typically how magic players will sell things, right? That's the easiest most liquid way to sell things is just sell it to a guy with all the buy list. And every card that you own, he has a buy list for it. He or she has a buy list for it. Make it simple, liquidate. The ma magic marketplace right now is brutal. And I would love to say, oh, the reserve list is safe. No, it's not. I would love to say, oh, the power nine. No, they, they are not. They're, the Black Lotus on Card Kingdom, and I know because I bought a Black Lotus based on the buy list of Card Kingdom. And I bought it for almost 13,000 because the buy list for a near mint of a, a Black Lotus at the time was 14,000, something like that. That was a cash offer, cash. The buy list in a Black Lotus is now 11. I think it's probably closer to 10. I think Star City, our, our card kingdom, I mean, God forbid anyone else have a buy list for a Black Lotus. I'm talking about the unlimited near mint, of course. Mine was not near mint. So at the time I bought a I would say light play or EX, maybe just a, a light play minus maybe. Upon closer inspection, I bought it for around 13,000 and some change. It could have been closer to 14,000. I had to go back and watch the video, but I know it was not, I know the buy list was a uh, near mint was definitely not 11,000 because I definitely paid way more than that. And mine was not near mint. So if the Black Lotus is taking a hit, what the F is left, man? What the F is left in this marketplace? If the Black Lotus, you know, a card that is actually rare from Unlimited, is actually powerful, I'm not saying it is, no card in Standard or Modern holds a candle of the Black Lotus in terms of rarity, print run, in terms of how powerful the card is. Yet that card is going down in price. Well, what hope do you have for anything else? What hope do you have for your War of the Spark boxes going up in price? Or your Modern Horizon 2 Rudy boxes? Or your uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I think Rudy's pumping Dungeons and Dragons now, uh, Baldur's Gate. You have no hope. Man, the Black Lotus is like dropping like a rock. Why would you think anything else can be saved? I mean, think about it. If the Black Lotus is dropping, and this is actually a card that is rare, not like artificially rare, so not like number, this is actually a card that is rare. It is the most iconic card in Magic, so it is a card that is famous. And it is losing value as we speak. Well, I mean, what about your sealed boxes of, uh, what about the sealed boxes of uh, Streets of New Campena? Do you need me to like to spell this out for you? If the rarest and most valuable magic card is losing, again, we can talk about, oh, Alpha Beta. I don't know what those two are doing. I know what Unlimited is doing because I have multiple copies of Unlimited. If that's getting bloodied in the street, then what hope does your, you know, Elspeth from the streets of New Campena hope? 
None. There is no hope. Anyway, as, as of right now. Now, if things change, of course, I'll make a video, a follow-up, but I don't know. It is what it is right now.